Hi there and welcome back to another NJS instructional video. In this video I'm going to compare these four Esky and ice boxes and see which one will hold ice the longest. Now this is primarily a performance or rather endurance test and as such we won't be comparing the more technical aspects like the design, construction, materials, warranty, strength and so forth. We will however be filling in each Esky and ice box with the same percentage of ice relative to its volume. Now these Esky and ice boxes all vary in design, construction and price. So let's see what we'll be comparing in this video. Our first Esky is the humble 50 litre Esky which retails at around the $60 mark. Now this product classifies as a hard cooler not an ice box. However we will still compare it to the other products as this is a relatively affordable cooler which would be in most people's price range. Second we have the Dometic 71 litre cool ice ice box and this retails for around $400. Third we have the Evercool 70 litre fiberglass ice box and this retails for around $550. And finally we have the Yeti Tundra 71 litre ice box and this retails for around $600. Now for this test we will be filling each Esky or ice box with around two bags of party ice. Both the Dometic and Yeti have the same 71 litre capacity. The Evercool is a fraction smaller at 70 litres. So each of these will receive two full bags of ice. The 50 litre Esky, we will be putting just over one and a half bags of ice or approximately 70%. This way each Esky and ice box will have a similar proportion of ice. Now each bag of ice will be broken into smaller pieces by dropping it exactly three times from the same height. Each Esky and ice box will be filled at the same time with ice. Each will be exposed to the same ambient conditions during the day and during the night. Every 24 hours, each Esky and ice box will be open for approximately 2 minutes to complete a visual inspection of the ice and also to measure the internal temperature wet, so that's the water or ice temperature and also the internal air temperature, so the dry temperature. To measure the internal temperatures, we'll be using this precision digital thermometer which has a range of negative 50 to 300 degrees Celsius with an accuracy of plus and minus 1 degree Celsius. We will also be recording the ambient temperature each day at approximately the same time. Additionally, we won't be draining any water from the Esky or ice boxes, as this has been proven by others to actually reduce the cooling capacity, contrary to popular belief. Now before we officially start, each Esky and ice box has been subject to the same overnight conditions with their lids open, so all will be starting at the same temperature. Alright, so let's make a start. And the ambient temperature when the ice was placed in is 18.5 degrees and the forecast temperature today is 22. Alright so day one and now we're going to start checking the temperatures both dry and wet of each ice box. The internal dry air temperature of the Yeti has stabilized at around 5.7 degrees Celsius and the internal wet temperature of the Yeti has stabilized at around 0.6 degrees Celsius. The internal air temperature of the Evercool has also stabilized at around 5.7 degrees Celsius and the wet internal temperature of the Evercool has stabilized at around 0.6 degrees Celsius. The internal air temperature of the Dometic has stabilized at around 5.6 degrees and the internal wet temperature of the Dometic 
has stabilised at around 0.6 degrees Celsius. The internal dry air temperature of the esky has stabilised at around 6.5 degrees Celsius. And the wet internal temperature of the esky has stabilised at around 0.6 degrees Celsius. And lastly, we're just going to complete a visual check of the ice. And I'm just going to use a wooden spoon so I don't use my hands and add unnecessary heat into the ice. So the Yeti looks really good. All the ice looks like it's in excellent condition and doesn't appear to be any water on the bottom. Next up is the Evercool. And again, the ice looks like it's in really good condition and with no water on the bottom. Now we have the Dometic. Again, the ice looks like it's in really good condition and with no visible water on the bottom. And finally we have the Esky and you can see we actually have quite a bit of water that's melted. Just... There's definitely water there and the ice looks like it's maybe halfway through uh, melting. The ambient temperature at the time of measurement is currently 20.9 degrees and there's a forecast top of 29 today. So that's day one completed and here's a recap of the results. So we're at day number two. Let's measure the internal dry and wet temperatures and see the condition of the ice. The internal temperature of the Yeti has stabilised at 5 degrees Celsius and the internal wet temperature is 0.6 degrees Celsius and the internal air temperature of the Evercool has stabilised at 5.1 degrees Celsius and the internal wet temperature has stabilised at 0.6 degrees Celsius the internal dry temperature of the Dometic has stabilised at 4.5 degrees Celsius and the internal wet temperature has stabilised at 0.6 degrees Celsius. The internal dry temperature of the Esky has stabilised at 7.7 .7 degrees Celsius. And the internal wet temperature has stabilised at 3 degrees Celsius. And the ambient temperature is currently 15.6 degrees with the forecast top of 18. And this is the state of the ice after two days in the Yeti and there's definitely melted ice at the bottom there. And this is the state of the ice of the Evercool after two days. And definitely like the Yeti, there's water at the bottom there. And this is the state of the Dometic after two days. And like the other two, um, definitely water on the bottom. And this is the state of the Esky after two days. And there's just a little bit of ice left, but mostly water. Day number three, and conducting a quick visual check of the conditions of the ice. The Yeti, Evercool and Zemetic all still have ice. However, the ice in the Esky has completely melted. Here are the results of day three. Day number four, and quickly going through the results and ice condition of each ice box. The internal wet temperatures are all the same at 0.6 degrees Celsius, like the previous days, but the condition of the ice has deteriorated significantly. Here is a summary of the results for day four. Day number five, again checking the temperatures of each ice box and conducting a visual check on the condition of the ice. The Yeti's ice has completely melted. The Evercool still has some ice remaining, albeit a very small amount. And the Dometic, like the Yeti, has no ice left. Here is a summary of the results of day 5. Therefore, the Evercool comes out on top after 5 days with being the last ice box with ice remaining. Interestingly, the Evercool trailed the Yeti and Dometic in terms of internal temperatures, however delivered the coolest temperatures on day 5. 
The Eddy comes in second place, with the next coolest temperatures on day 5, despite having no ice remaining, and closely followed by the Dometic in third place. Surprisingly, the Dometic performed better than expected and gave the Evercool and Yeti a real run for their money. Additionally, it had the coolest temperatures for each day except the last. Finally, as expected, came the humble Esky in last place. To add an additional layer of complexity, the Evercool icebox used here in testing is almost 20 years old. The Esky, approximately 7 years old the Yeti a few years old, and the Dometic less than a year old. As a recap, all Esky and Ice boxes were subject to the exact same conditions, temperatures and had the same proportion of ice relative to their internal volumes. The Evercool came out as the star performer, closely followed by the Yeti and then Dometic. Typically an ice box will be filled not only with ice, but also with other frozen or refrigerated goods. This in no doubt will affect the longevity of the ice, as there is less dry air volume, and so the results may differ to that obtained in this video. A handy tip also for when using an ice box, for the likes of a camping trip. 24 hours before you begin to fill the ice box with foods, beverages and ice, cool the ice box down using some frozen drink bottles filled with water. This helps prime the ice box and get it nice and cool. A big shout out and thank you to J and JK for lending us their Yeti icebox and G and IS for lending us their Evercool icebox. I hope you found this video informative. Don't forget to like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell notification icon. Thanks for watching.